Hey guys, and welcome back to my podcast. This is your host, Betty, and I'm so sorry I've been really MIA. I really had a few weeks that have been very chaotic, and I did um, record the episodes, just I didn't get to actually upload them, so I wanted to add this one to the first one that's going up, so that you guys know that I have three episodes for you. So... Yeah, I know. Chaotic, right? And speaking of chaotic, <laughs> chaotic. Uh, we're literally talking about a topic that is really important for our mental and physical well-being. Cortisol. Didn't I tell you I was going to talk about that? Yeah, this is often referred as the stress hormone. As someone who's had personal battles with stress, I've come to realize how crucial it is to understand cortisol and its effects. Oh my god, let me tell you that. Ugh. So what is cortisol? Cortisol is a steroid hormone a steroid hormone produced by our adrenal glands, which are located on top of our kidneys. It is often called a stress hormone because it's released in response to stress and low blood glucose concentration. But cortisol does more than just help us deal with stress. It plays a significant role in various bodily functions, including metabolism regulation and immune response control. Essentially, cortisol helps our body respond to danger or stress by increasing our heart rate, blood pressure, and energy supply. Well, that's supposed to be a good thing, right? Because it doesn't really sound like a good thing. (laughs) Honestly, it's... I feel like... The more I've learned about cortisol, the more it's like I can see it. Literally, I've learned that it creates inflammation in your body. So it can have you, like, maybe it's really difficult for you to, like, get rid of, like, belly fat. Like, you have, like, that part of your belly that just does not go away. That might be due to cortisol, like stress. Um, Your face on your body might look like they have inflammation you know they might look a little bit more swollen more puffy and that is all because of cortisol (sighs) how fun it is huh not at all so you know work family and personal projects always you know when we're trying to like juggle multiple responsibilities we start noticing that you know we get anxious on edge and plain exhausted so at that point we realize our cortisol levels you know, my view of the charts. This awareness is a game changer. So, in my case, like, I began to understand that my body was in constant state of fight or flight, even when there was no immediate danger. So, how does cortisol affect your behavior and personality? In the short term, an increase in cortisol can be beneficial. It can make us more alert and ready to face challenges. However, When cortisol levels remain high for an extended period of time, it can lead to some not-so-great effects. Really? You're telling me that, huh? (laughs) Yeah, I know that. Chronic high cortisol levels are linked to anxiety, depression, memory problems, and even personality changes. You might find yourself becoming more irritable, withdrawn, or even experiencing mood swings. It's a bit like an emotional... It's like being on an emotional roller coaster without knowing when the next dip or rise will come. Because who doesn't love that, right? Ugh. But why do we have cortisol in the first place? Well, from an evolutionary perspective, cortisol was vital for our ancestors', ancestors survival. It's part of the fight or flight response that prepares your body to either face a threat or run away from it. This response was crucial when humans had to deal with medium physical dangers, like predators. In modern times, however, our stressors are often more not life-threatening, like work deadlines, relationship issues, financial pressures. They all can trigger the same cortisol response, even though the threat is more psychological than it is physical. (sighs) Now... Let's discuss some side effects of having too much cortisol in our system. Prolonged elevated cortisol levels can lead to weight gain, especially around the abdomen, like I said. The belly, difficult to get rid of. Sometimes it's not that we need to eat less or need to exercise more. Exercise more is just like, 
freaking cortisol like our levels are just crazy and it's just we're just basically storing all the hormones there just in case high blood pressure which can lead to cardiovascular problems sleep disturbances like insomnia or restless sleep immune suppression making you more susceptible to illnesses um, digestive problems such as irritable bowel syndrome skin issues like acne and other skin conditions mood swings increase irritability and anxiety memory and concentration problems like difficulty focusing and retaining information so how does cortisol increase well there are several factors that can cause the cortisol levels to rise like chronic stress you know long-term exposure to stressors without an adequate relaxation and recovery can increase that which you know a lot of us have been going through a lot, obviously, because the world is crazy. The world is crazy. Poor sleep, lack of quality sleep, or irregular sleep patterns. Yeah, we might be like, oh yeah, I go to sleep and then I wake up every like five minutes. That's not good sleep. An unhealthy diet, you know, high sugar intake or poor nutritional choices. It's always to try to like balance everything. Basically, everything is about moderation. Lack of exercise, if you have a sedentary lifestyle without regular physical activity, that can also affect. In my case, you know, you guys, I don't know if I've told you, but I've begun to work out for a few months now. I'm seeing, like, results as far as building my muscle, but, you know, some days are just like, ugh, you know, why is this still like that? But at least I'm moving most days, most days. Medical conditions... Also, you know, certain health issues like cushion syndrome can elevate the levels of cortisol. So, managing um, cortisol levels is crucial for maintaining our health. So, what are the strategies that we can use to manage our cortisol levels? Well, we can do lifestyle changes, you know, like regular exercise and just going for a walk. Actually, before I actually began to work out, um, like lifting and stuff, I actually, you know, during the winter, I was doing walks every day. I went out and took a walk around the neighborhood. Usually, I would do maybe three quarters of a mile. Sometimes I would even do a mile and three quarters. It depends on how I was feeling. You know, I would just like try to do it for at least 20, 30 minutes. So I would just go around the neighborhood and that is how I started getting my energy levels back. Um, a balanced diet, you know, it is important that we don't um, overindulge in a lot of things. Like I don't drink soda anymore. Like I might drink a soda every once in a while, but that's only if like somebody gives it to me or like if I'm in a restaurant or something and there's nothing else to drink. But I have been drinking more like, you know, natural lemonade. I, I buy my lemons and then I just add water, a little bit of sugar. I'm not saying no sugar at all, but just like a little, just to sweeten it, give it a little kick, but not enough where it's like super sweet. And then, you know, we have to, I've tried like, just, I don't eat like a lot of bread. I eat some pasta and stuff, but that's part of the balance and um, more veggies more fruit more protein um, a good sleep hygiene it's also foundational so I found that establishing a consistent sleep schedule significantly improved my stress levels basically now I'm used to like it's 8 o'clock the kids go to bed and then I go and lay in my bed I might fall asleep, I might not, but at least I'm already in bed. And I'm not up until like late hours of the night. And then I sleep like four hours and then I'm like up. No. But I have been waking up a little bit earlier. Sometimes I'm up, not up, up, but like wait, like awake. I might be awake sometimes like at five, sometimes at six. Nothing later than that, unless it's a Sunday when everybody is off. And I get to sleep in a little bit more, maybe until like 8, maybe 9. 
I know, right? <laughs> Luxuries of life. Just kidding. But, you know, it all helps because if we have like a random sleeping schedule, or if we feel like our brains and our bodies are just never, like they never get used to it. So they're always like trying to like juggle and they're always like struggling really to like be here and there. Um, what else? Um, stress management techniques like mindfulness and meditation. Practicing deep breathing exercises can help the mind and reduce stress. Even just taking a few minutes each day to focus on breathing makes a huge difference. You know, sometimes I forget how to breathe. That is the thing for me, for anxiety. The first time I think that happened to me was when I was in labor and I literally, literally forgot how to breathe. I was like, how the hell does one forget how to breathe? It's like one of the main basic functions of the body and I forgot so they had to give me oxygen <laughs> basically I was just panicking and you know but sometimes we are like <sighs> slow down and just take a moment and you know obviously we have to like I said already prioritize our sleep aim for seven to nine hours of quality sleep each night um, sometimes I do just fine with six, but then during the day I'm like, oh, I need a nap. Um, I think everybody has like a different number of hours, but I think for me, like seven is a good number. Six or seven. Um, stay active, you know, incorporate physical health into your daily routine. Eat well, maintain a, a balanced diet rich in whole foods. Um, you know, try to add some fiber maybe to move more. Every, get rid of all that stuff, practice mindfulness, maybe engage in meditation or yoga, and lastly, you know, seek support. Don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. Sometimes we need extra support. So don't hesitate to talk to your help provider, your therapist, if you're feeling overwhelmed. Therapy can provide valuable tools and perspective to help manage stress effectively. You know, so sometimes we just need to talk to someone and sometimes that someone is not somebody that, you know, we know, like it's maybe not our family, maybe not our friends because we feel like we're going to be judged or whatever. And that actually, you know, it's going to make things worse if we feel more pressure about the things that we're already pressure. You know, it's easier to just go and talk to maybe to a professional, somebody who's not going to judge, somebody who will be more understanding and can see that this is like a health issue instead of a like oh you're just overreacting you know because sometimes we feel like we cannot tell people things because that's how they're going to react but then it might not always be the case but that's just an overthinker um opinion so remember that it is important to listen to your body and take proactive steps to manage stress small changes can lead to significant improvements in your overall well-being so, to wrap up, understanding cortisol and its effects can empower us to take better care of our mental and physical health. By being mindful of the stress levels and making intentional, intentional lifestyle choices, we can manage cortisol effectively and improve our quality of life. So, I hope this has worked for you. And... You know, this information, just take it in mind if you need to talk to it. But thank you so much for tuning in today's episode. I'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences with stress and cortisol. So feel free to reach out. As always, I'm here for you. Don't forget. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Until then, take care and stay mindful. I love you guys. Mwah.